five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition, and we have liftoff. Stage one propulsion nominal. Vehicles pitching downrange. We're now 30 seconds into flight and Falcon 9 is preparing to pass through max Q, which will happen at T plus one minute and 12 seconds. For those of you that might be unfamiliar with this turn, max Q is when the vehicle will experience the greatest amount of dynamic greatest amount of dynamic pressure. Call out there that everything is looking nominal for first stage. To prepare for max Q, we throttle the engines down and then back up about 20 seconds later. And this helps ensure that we keep those dynamic pressures below a certain level. Falcon 9 is supersonic. So there we heard the call out that the vehicle is now going faster than the speed of sound. Vehicle is experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. So there we heard the call out that the vehicle is passing through max Q. Again, that's the moment in which the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of dynamic pressure, greatest amount that it'll see throughout flight. Now in just a few seconds, we'll hear the call out that MVAC chill has begun. Just like we did on the M1D engines for first stage, we open the pre-valves between the propellant tanks and the turbo pumps, allow some of that super chilled liquid oxygen to cool down the turbo pump MVAC hardware. There we go, so MVAC chill has begun. So that super chilled liquid oxygen is flowing through the turbo pumps, allowing them to cool off prior to full flow of propellant. Everything is looking good with stage one trajectory. Coming up, we're gonna have three events happening in quick succession. We're gonna have main, main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation and SES-1, or second engine start one. Main engine cutoff coming up in three seconds. And Miko. Stage separation confirmed. All right, there on your screen, we have confirmation of stage separation as well as MVAC ignition. Good, MVAC ignition. Great view there of planet Earth rotating behind the first stage, which is on the left-hand side of your screen and the second stage on the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, we can see those grid fins beginning to deploy into the landing position. Those grid fins will be utilized to help steer Falcon 9 uh, for a precise landing on our drone ship, which like I mentioned earlier, is positioned a couple hundred miles. On nominal trajectory. Nominal trajectory there for Falcon 9. Uh, as I said, those uh, grid fins will be utilized to help guide and steer the booster back to the drone ship. Bearing separation confirmed. And confirmation that the, uh, there you saw it on your screen, the two fairing halves have separated, exposing the SXM-7 satellite. If you look closely, you can actually see the fairing disappearing from view in the background there. Currently at T plus four minutes and three seconds into flight, and we're, within, we're performing the first of two planned MVAC burns. At stage separation, the first stage's velocity is about 2,200 meters per second or 5,000 meters per hour, pretty fast. Once the first and second stages separate, that first stage is actually still moving at such a high velocity that it continues to raise its altitude uh, as it coasts for a couple of minutes prior to starting its downward return back to Earth. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. The next major milestone that we'll be able to see will be that first stage entry burn. For the entry burn, we relight the center engine, which we call E9, 
and then partway through the transition back into uh, back through the Earth's atmosphere, we relight two more Merlin M1D engines, E1 and E5, to give us a total of three M1Ds helping to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We're expecting that entry burn to begin in about one minute. Trajectory continues to look good there on second stage, carrying the SXM-7 satellite for Sirius XM. Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. Gorgeous views of first stage as it has now reoriented itself. Coasting through Apogee and now returning back down. As I mentioned, we will be performing two maneuvers for that landing. First entry burn coming up in about 10 seconds, followed of course by the landing burn on the drone ship. Stage one FTS is saved. First stage is currently about 50 miles above the Earth's surface. Stage one entry burn has started. There we can see that the entry burn has begun on the left-hand side of your screen for that first stage re-entry. Again, we start by igniting the center engine first and then reignite two more engines to give us a total of three engines allowing us to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters the Earth's one, atmosphere burn, shut down. and shut down of those three engines for entry burn. Trajectory continues to look nominal there for a second stage on the right-hand side of your screen. I love that view of the MVAC nozzle glowing orange with Earth behind it. Next up, we have a couple of major milestones happening back to back. The start of the landing burn followed immediately by Seco 1 or second engine cutoff 1 on the second stage. Seco is where we shut down that MVAC engine to allow the second stage to coast for a little bit. This event preserves the fuel until we need it for the final burn to take us to our targeted orbit for the SXM-7 satellite. And then about 25 seconds after Seco 1, we'll hopefully have a live view of the first stage touching down. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Touching down on our drone ship, just read the instructions. So we're expecting the landing burn to begin in about 10 seconds and Seco to begin in about 15 seconds. Stage two FTS is saved. Everything continued to looking Seco. nominal. Uh, and there we heard the call out of Seco. And tuning in for that landing on the left hand side. Hopefully we stick it. <laughs> Looks like we lost the feed there. We'll try to bring that try to bring that back to you whenever we have the opportunity. But we did hear the call, the call out that we have good orbit for uh, the second stage. So nominal orbital insertion. Stage one is landed. Landing operators proceed into 11.100 on recovery one. We did hear the call out there that the first stage has landed. Unfortunately, we weren't able to bring the video of that as it was over the horizon. And there's that view. <laughs> Once again, this is the seventh flight and therefore the seventh landing of this particular booster. Uh, also marking the 69th successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. The second stage vehicle has just entered its first coast phase, which will last about 18 minutes, and will light that MVAC engine for a second time shortly thereafter at T plus 26 minutes and three seconds. Right now, we're coming up on the second burn of the upper stage engine here in just a couple of minutes. 
Currently, the flight, the flight computer is commanding the settling thrusters to turn on and off, releasing nitrogen gas that helps lightly push the stage, allowing propellant to stay at the bottom of the tank above the engine, right where we need it. We're expecting that second engine start two to occur in a couple of seconds. And there we can see that that MVAC engine has ignited and the nozzle beginning to turn a lovely orange. At this point in time, the second stage will burn for about 45 seconds, adding over 2,000 meters per second to the second stage's speed before shutting it down for a second time. That shutdown event is called SECO2, or second engine cutoff number two. This burn places the SXM satellite into the required orbit prior to separating it from Falcon 9. And we had confirmation that we have a good burn. Nominal orbit insertion. And nominal orbit for that second stage, about 20 seconds away from that payload deployment. There on your screen, we have a great shot of the SXM-7 satellite. Payload separation confirmed. And there on your screen, we can see that the payload has separated. We've received confirmation of that successful separation of the SXM-7 satellite from our second stage, which will be bringing our webcast today to a close. <laughs> Thank you to Sirius XM for entrusting us with the SXM-7 satellite. This mission marked the seventh launch and landing for this particular Falcon 9 booster, SpaceX's 69th successful booster landing, and despite a crazy 2020, our 25th launch this year. To the range and FAA, we appreciate having your support for today's mission. And to all of our viewers, as always, thank you for joining us and have a great day.